And on this segment today, it's an open forum. We're going to be talking to Dr. Calvin Owusu, and he was going to be helping us to answer all your various questions. So kindly send us your questions by the WhatsApp line 0550 If you happen to be outside Ghana, kindly add plus 233 to that number. Now, if you're on social media, uh, you can also post your question with the hashtag Breakfast Daily, and he's here to answer your questions for you. So let's begin. Uh, we, let me welcome Dr. Owusu. How are you this morning? Very, very well. I was enjoying the music. Yeah, it was, it's fantastic. Well, I mean, it's a holiday. This is, that's how we do it. Yeah. Wonderful. So, uh, it's fantastic having you here with us again. Um, so let me begin with the first question that came on Twitter. Um, the question was simply, the gentleman says, every time I sit, um, on one leg, okay. Okay. Or, <laughs> and this is the catch, or when I bend my knee, it goes numb. Okay. Am I safe? That's the question. <laughs> well, um, am I safe? That's a, that's a bit of a, a difficult question to answer. Mm. Now, how long does he have to sit for? How long is he bent before for? Before it happens. Before it happens. It's very okay. important because it could be nothing or it could be something serious. It could, it could, be a, it could point to something to do with the blood circulation. Okay. Maybe, maybe there's, there's an obstruction to, the, to blood flow to an extent, which means that there's limited blood to the extremities of, the, of that particular leg. Mm. And so that's why it's getting numb. But the, the description given is very, very difficult to address specifically what exactly is going on. Okay, so what, okay, now in the case of, um, uh, what, what could he do in the interim okay. um, to, to try and see if it maybe isolate what the problem could be or maybe he can reach out to you, I don't know. What, well, what? The, the, the easiest thing would be to, get, to get a, have a checkup done okay. so that we we'll know specifically, because like I said, it could be a circulation issue, it could be a nervous issue. Like mm -hmm. when I say nervous, I mean nerves. So um, th there could be several, several things. Yeah. Is, is there a pre <clears throat> predisposing factor? Is he hypertensive or diabetic? Because these ones would also point to a particular thing. So I think a checkup would be the best um, thing. So he can actually reach out to me on social media and mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can see how best we can, we okay. can help him. So, so Nathaniel, that's um, Dr. Ozu says you reach out to him on social media. Media. What's wh how can you reach you on social? Media? Just find me, Kelvin Osu MD, on Instagram, Facebook, okay. Twitter. All right. So Nathaniel, um, that's the the um, social media handle there you can handle. You but let me let me just chip. I actually received a question before I came and um, from last week's session on mm. UTIs, urinary tract infection. So somebody asked me and um, well told me that she he he actually has split urine. Whenever he goes to urinate, the urine splits in two. Okay. Now that's something that is um, it it could be. Uh, what's it called? It could be nothing, but it could also be something. And oh, it's, usually, it's usually a complication of chronic urinary tract infections or an STI that was poorly managed, poorly treated. Oh, I see. You know, so, um, so I thought it was just having fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know. <laughs> I mean, usually, you, usually it's supposed to come out as one stream. Yeah. You know, of course, when, 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 you're, when you're trying to have fun, you can squeeze it there. But it, it, if, the, if the, the penis is left alone and the urine stream still splits into or it splits into by all itself, the time, yeah. it means that there's probably a scar tissue. Okay. You know how when you cut yourself, it heals yes. by scarring. Yes. So there's probably a scar tissue that has, has bridged, yeah. Yeah, that has bridged the tube. And so the urine coming has to come out in two. Mm. Now, if it's not if, if it's not treated i'm talking about the um the scar tissue is not dealt with yeah. it can cause it can have ripple effects even as far as far back as your kidneys mm. you could have wow. um yes you could have a back a back damming effect of urine which will cause the kidneys to dilate your ureters to dilate and it's not a good thing so if you have split urine you need to have it investigated and the appropriate treatment you know mm. carried out mm. wow okay a question from labadi is asking is there a remedy for hair loss Okay, so it depends on what is causing the hair loss. Say typically, typical example, if, you're, if, if, if balding is in your family. And keep in mind that balding is not only male, a mm. male thing. You can have balding in females. You know, so if the balding runs in your family, then you may not be able to do anything about it, except if you had to go and do I mean, hair transplant or any of those um, um, sort of um, aesthetic procedures to try and uh, regenerate the hair. Yeah. You know, so, but if the hair loss is being caused by something, maybe a chemical you're putting in your hair, because some chemicals can actually cause hair loss. Even some of the ladies, their perming creams can actually cause hair loss. 
you know so if the hair loss is being caused by something that you are doing to yourself obviously if you right. stop it it will uh, okay. it will return to normal okay you know and also as you grow older your hair thins out mm. you know and this happens in both both sexes so as you grow older your hair thins out and you could lose some hair okay. you know and if even related to hair loss so some people also have overgrowth of hair there's a hormone hormonal um interplay when it comes to hair mm. so you realize that males have a lot of hair in other places apart from their, their their scalp yeah you know that's a function of testosterone so you could also have similar thing happening in some females mm. you know also weight gain you know can also cause your hair um, pattern to also also change oh i see so that when, when it comes to hair i mean because hair is a um a fun, a, plays a role in beauty it can be very 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 distressing mm. b both extremes either hair loss or oh. overgrowth of hair so yeah. You need a checkup, you know, so that we know exactly what is causing your hair loss. Mm. So that we know if it's something that we can remedy or it's, in, or it's, it's a genetic thing that we can't do much about. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> interesting. Hair is a very, very, very interesting, interesting. subject. Yeah. <laughs> Does scar tissue, and just following up on this, when I'm asking this and I'll explain to you why I'm asking this question. <laughs> Does scar tissue uh, prevent hair growth in the area of the scarring? So hair, 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 uh, what's it called? Hair grows from hair follicles. Okay. So you realize that when you, when, when you shave your hair, clean shaving, you actually see some holes yes. in your hair. Yes. That is where the hair actually comes out of. Okay. That's the hair follicle. Now, if you just went to do a shave, most of the time, it will just cut the tip of the hair. So you still find some black things inside. Yeah. But if you were to use a hair removing cream, mm. it goes into the follicle and removes the hair. Okay. Now, if you've had an injury, the, the scar tissue that forms it does not contain hair follicles. Oh, okay. So it will not be possible for hair to grow in the scar tissue. Yeah. So that is why, for instance, somebody who has had a, a, an issue of burns mm. on, the, on, the, on the scalp, that yeah. area would not have not hair. Go, hair so they would have to, use, you, they'd have to use aids, maybe, maybe a wig cap or some, some, some form of, um, yeah, it still comes out to wig to sort of cover that particular area where mm. the scar tissue is formed. Okay. okay. I see. Interesting. No, I had an accident when I was a, when I was younger, and I noticed that as I'm getting older, there's a particular <laughs> spot where there's a scar tissue there, you and, know, and that yeah. place has sort of stopped. There's no hair, exactly. You know, so, so in, in the past when you had plenty hair, it was it was it compensating. Aha, uh -huh, it compensated, <laughs> yeah. so you don't see it. Okay, all right. So uh, another question here. I've been itching for three months. Wow. When I went to the hospital, the doctor prescribed amoxicillin and um, ibuprofen, but it's not working. That's, I think that's the first question. And then there's another question that says, are there any injections for hives? For, okay. So itching is another um, interesting issue. So itching for three months, it's, it, it's, out of the ordinary, you started itching for over the past three months. Now the questions I would want to know is, have you moved your location? Are you staying, like, have you moved where you stay or okay. have you started a new work? Because environmental factors play a role. If you have moved your location, it could be that even the water you are using. Is, mm. it, is, it, um, is it water from a borehole that okay. you, are, you, are, you, are, you are using? Because you know borehole water, depending on where the borehole is located, yeah. the chemical concentrations in there are, are different. Varied, yeah. you know? So maybe your body was using a different kind of water and now you're using this kind of water. That can trigger mm. itching if you're allergic to water that is inside the water. It could it be some food that you're you are eating or some new ingredient you've added to your food that mm. is causing you to itch. You know, there are so many different things that can cause itching. You know, but itching for three months is quite, it's quite it's a, a, a bit so of a, a, yes. Now, I don't, um, sitting here right now, because I don't have enough information, I can't tell why he, I mean, he or she was put on amoxicillin because amoxicillin is an antibiotic. Yeah. But I'll start, suggest that he, um, she, I mean, the person sees a dermatologist mm. so that we find that. But of course, if you can answer these questions that, that I've asked and try to make some changes to the environment, because it could even be a soap you are using. Have you okay. started using a different soap or a different cream? Mm. You know, so try and change all these things and then see if it's still not helping. You should see a dermatologist and then we can get to the bottom of this. Okay. All right. There's another question here. Interesting one. <laughs> What kind of drinks mm -hmm. can someone with diabetes take? And the follow-up question says, can someone with diabetes drink Hennessy? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, but before I answer that it question... It sounds like a holiday <laughs> mood kind of question. <laughs> before I answer that question, the, the previous question was, can, is there an injection for hives? Yes, for hives, now, yeah. If, if, I mean, hives is an, it's an allergy, a form of allergy, mm. you know, so and there's, there's always an injection. However, it's not for everyday use. 
depending on how severe the hives are, and if, if it's associated with um, bronchial, con when I say bronchial constriction, I'm talking about chest signs, so the person cannot breathe, yeah. you know, it's having difficulty talking. All of these will point to the moving from an oral um, medication to a more, to we call it parenteral, so that's an injection. Okay. So yes, the injections for those things, but it's not, you can't just walk into a pharmacy and, and get an injection for hives, that's not how it works, mm. you know. Okay, now with respect to the diabetes, you see diabetics have a problem of sugar control. Now, um, so what the, the, there's a lot of sugar in the blood because the insulin which is needed to push the sugar into the cells for the cells to use, you see the cells need the sugar to con convert to energy so that it can continue to function properly. The sugar is staying inside the blood, it's not mm. moving to the cells because insulin is either not available, okay. that's type 1, okay. or it's available but it's not being, the cells are not sensitive to the insulin, that's mm. the type 2. Mm. So now, um, when, when, when it comes to what you can take in or what you cannot take in, it depends on um, how well controlled your, your diabetes is. So if you're a diabetic and you're not compliant on your medication, obviously your blood sugar will be high. Yeah. In which case, even if you eat any, any, cause all the food is converted to sugar eventually. Anyway, yeah. Every food you're taking is converted to sugar. So whatever you're taking, because your diabetes is poorly controlled, your sugar is going to spike. Yeah. So basically you have to um, try and avoid uh, refined foods. Mm. So, it's, it, for instance, it would be better to have um, natural fruit juice that you, you squeeze yourself, or in fact, just eat the fruit, mm. than to go and buy a box fruit, okay. a box um, fruit okay. juice. Yeah. Because the box fruit juice is refined, it's using refined sugar, mm. which would enter your bloodstream in a rush. In a rush. Yeah. So, it will cause your sugar to spike some more. Now, you already have a challenge with that. So, that can tip you over into, um, into unconsciousness and things like that. But if you took the fruit itself, it takes a while for the body to Break process that food yeah. into the sugar that will be yeah. absorbed. Okay. In that time that is being processed, your body may have been able to deal with the sugar that's already in the blood. Mm. You know. But when it comes to drinking Hennessy and, and other things, well, <laughs> <laughs> I would say moderation. Okay. Moderation is very, very important because, again, um, alcohol has, um, it creates the impression of giving you energy when in actual fact it's not. You know, and so you might get, get into a problem, a, a situation where yeah, you, 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 you might get into, a, what's it called, a diabetic emergency because, because you are not actually eating enough, even though it kind of, it, you already kind of have a lot of sugar. Mm. You see, medically, we, we say something like diabetes is starvation in the midst of plenty. Yes. Because there's a lot of sugar already, so plenty, why, why are the cells starving? Yeah. So you don't want to complicate matters with, mm. al with too much alcohol, so that's why I say moderation. Okay. But of course, if you can avoid it totally, that's also okay. fine, very, very fine with me. Okay, <laughs> okay. so more interesting questions here. Um, are there any side effects of expressing breast milk with a breast pump? <laughs> <laughs> so the breast pump is trying to simulate what the kid, the, the, the baby would do. Yeah. So the, um, the periodic um, sucking um, of the of the of the breast, which actually is what would um, trigger, trigger the, the, the the hormone that stimulate that will release the bre the breast milk. So the, there's generally speaking, there's no side effect. However, breastfeeding itself has issues, mm. you know, because it, it can result in nipple cracks, nipple infection. So all of these things are also possible with a breast pump, oh, okay. you know, and especially if you're not paying attention, you're just doing that thing, it, you know, the nipple gets um, tired, it gets sore. Okay. And if you keep doing that, you could, um, you know, end up with complications, okay. you know, so the same way, pretty much the same way you, you, you treat um, breastfeeding a baby mm. should be the same way you treat breastfeeding. I mean, trying to um, express pump, the milk yeah, with the pump. Okay. But of course, the pump is, is um, an artificial thing, so it has to be um, cleaned well. Okay. Very, very well, because you put a pump on your nipple, your baby comes to suck next, you could be transferring infection here and there. So it's very important that the pump is kept clean, very, very clean. Okay. And obviously one pump for one, one woman, you can't share pumps yeah. at all. Okay, <laughs> that's important. Very, very important, especially now that we are dealing with all sorts of viruses in the, in the system, coronavirus, yeah. and you can't share pumps. All right, super. Now, another question, and the questions are coming in hard and fast, so <laughs> I mean, we're trying to keep up. Um, what other nutritional alternatives are available within the first six months when breast milk is not sufficient? Well, again, try not to, not to take decisions based on marketing, like things you've heard on TV or heard on radio. You need to see, seek help, professional help. Okay. It's because the, the baby's um, stomach is very, very underdeveloped and very delicate. You, are, are you aware, I, I, mean, I, don't know if, well, I don't know if you are aware, but if you actually were mixing milk mm. and you took one spoon more than, one, one spoonful more than, more than necessary, 
or the milk you mix you mix it with too much water the baby can actually develop diarrhea and that oh, diarrhea, I see. exactly i didn't know that <laughs> wow and that diarrhea could actually end up you know causing more more harm than mm. not even have, having fed the baby at all okay you see so it's very very important that you seek help because when it comes to babies even the weight the weight of the baby is taken into consideration before deciding how much volume you should feed that baby wow. so they may have written that take three spoonfuls mm. it's not for every baby okay because what if your baby was preterm okay you know what if your baby you know so yeah so you need to seek help so if the breast milk is not flowing as it should mm. the first point of call is the midwife if the midwife is having challenges they will refer you to the um, yeah. obstetrician who if they're having challenges they'll refer you to the pediatrician yeah. so try and get help so that you don't just take the, and there's, spe there's actually specific milk for specific kinds of babies mm. preterm babies have specific milk that they are given Normal term babies have specific meal. Data. So there is not one. There is, it's, it's not, it's one, not size one size fits, fits all. all at yeah. all. Okay. <laughs> this is this is interesting. Um, what's the best way to deal with early detection of a fatty liver? Hmm. That's a very interesting question. Well, how how do you actually determine a, a detect an early fatty liver? It's it's not. You are not likely to detect. detect that's physically okay you might detect it if you were if you went for a, a routine, routine check. Yeah. yes check and then they did a scan and then they realized that your liver is slightly enlarged and they will suspect a fatty liver mm. you know but you, they, there are really no signs that you can use to detect that i have a fatty liver you know however the fatty liver is a pre uh, what's the english word it's a prelude or it, it gives you a, a sign that if you don't do something about your situation mm. it could progress to cirrhosis or other liver pathology oh, okay you know so the fatty liver is it, it, so if, if you were, it did a scan and you found fatty liver mm. they would counsel you cut down on alcohol cut down on 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 fatty foods cut down on on a lot of things okay. eat more fruits and vegetables you know because you want to give your liver rest mm. And of course, they also tell you to, if you are taking any medication, non-essential medication, yeah. they'll ask you to withdraw Perfect. as well. Yeah. Because the liver is where a lot of these toxins are yeah, processed. Yeah. So you want to give the liver a rest so that it can recover okay. and get back to normal size. Okay. All right. So now, there's so many of them. All right. <laughs> so this one says, this is from a woman. I think she didn't want to mention her name. Is there medical help for the pain I feel when I have sex? Hmm. This is very, very, very early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, the pain you feel when you have sex could mm -hmm. come from a, a lot of different um, issues. Okay. The so the commonest cause of pain in sex is friction, which okay. is a result of dryness. So the question I would ask is, are you, well, are you and your partner, are you investing in foreplay? Okay. Or are you using a lubricant? Because mm. if there's dryness in the, you see the skin, the skin of the, the vagina, and to an extent the penis, is quite sensitive. It's quite light. It's quite thin. Mm. So if you if you imagine you for you you it's yourself, abrasive. if you if you if you, if, you, if you have zipped up your trousers and caught your, your penis in the zipper, see how painful it is. I, I don't know if you have felt, but those who have felt, they know what I'm talking. And they think, and the, the skin of the vagina is actually even thinner than what you have on your penis. Mm. So that's how sensitive it is. So if there's friction. It causes a lot of burns, which will then result in pain. So it's a bit difficult to address it all today, but the most common one is usually friction burn. Mm. And so if you invested in foreplay or use a lube, you'd, you'd probably overcome this pain. Okay. If not, then you have to seek help. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and another question here. Do facial scrubs actually work on acne? <laughs> So acne or pimples, acne is actually a kind of an infection mm. and it's common in the black skin because our skin, I mean, sorry, our hair is, um, is curly. Mm. So usually, and especially in male, when you shave your skin and you shave your hair and then the hair is regrowing, it sort of curls on itself and then goes back into the pore. Now that okay. presents as a, as a source of infection because the bacteria will then have a way to track into the into the um, the pore and then it creates the bump which is the acne or the pimple okay. and so in treating the facial scrubs some of them do work because it helps to cleanse the face okay you know and then also because of because of the sort of the abrasion abrasiveness of the of the rub it sort of helps to pull the hair out mm. you know so it depends on the kind of rub you are using okay but if you're having a consistent or constant problem with acne it could be that you have a specific challenge with needs and attention and the specialist for that is the dermatologist okay so you probably need to see the, the dermatologist who can even recommend the best scrub for you in that particular situation okay. all right a couple more questions um, there's a lot more actually but we can't we run out of time so let me just do a couple more questions quickly and then we go and um, what is the cause this is coming from Hassan in Tamale it says what is the cause of delayed menstruation 
with respect to a new, um, sorry, <laughs> a young girl having her first menses, or are we talking about a delay between mens menses? Because um, if, if it's I a... Think, I think the, ref the question sounds like it's somebody who's already menstruating, okay. but it has noticed that there may be irregularity okay. or you know, it's not coming this month. The first issue is that most women don't know their cycle. Mm. They don't have a clue how many days their cycle is. So they would say something like, I'm supposed to bleed every, every month. So if I don't bleed this month, it means that my menses are delayed. Yeah. So the first advice I'll give you is get to know your cycle. Track it. Now, how do you know your cycle? Mm -hmm. the, day, the day that you notice blood, the first day, that first day is day one of your cycle. Okay. So you start counting. Take the calendar until the next day, the next time when um, you have your menses again. Mm. So the distance, oh, sorry, the time between those two is your cycle. But you need to do this for about six months and then strike an average to give you an idea of your cycle length. Then when you now have this figure, then you can tell when your next menses is coming. So if it yeah. doesn't come, then you can say there's delay. But if you don't know your cycle, it's difficult to, to explain delayed menses. Very, very difficult. Okay. Final one before we go. Um, I have unstable BP of 140 over 80 and 150 over 90. You are hypertensive. I'm, I'm 30 years of age. How do I go about it? My doctor says I'm still too young to be kept on drugs. Hmm. So um, I, I, I struggle to, to, to subscribe to what well, the, 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 the person is saying, the doctor is saying. Because once your BP is that high, it doesn't matter how old you are, we have mm. to bring it down. Okay. Because the longer your BP stays at that level, the more the damage, more damage yeah. it's causing. Yeah. So it's better to actually get on treatment or at least start lifestyle modification. When okay. I say lifestyle modification, I'm talking about cutting down on, on junk food, cutting down alcohol, uh, alcohol salts, um, oily foods, all those things. Okay eating more fruits, vegetables, and having a more active lifestyle. Um, using the stairs instead of using the elevator, jogging, all those things are very important because you have to do those things to bring down the BP. Yeah. If those ones are not working, then you have to start medication. Because if you don't bring down the BP, you're going to have eye problems, you're going to have heart problems, you're going to have kidney problems, mm. you're going to have problems almost all everywhere. Of, yeah. And so hypertension is not something, that is why it's called a silent killer. Okay. You know, so we don't want to wait until it, it gets out of control. Okay. I think we're going to have to continue this. <laughs> I'm not making any promises, but we may, we may have to continue this open forum soon because the questions are a lot.